What up, Jet Team? Welcome to the channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Ryan. I'm a former F-15E combat fighter pilot, F-16 Thunderbird pilots, and today we're going to be breaking down the Su-57 fighting against an F-14 just as it did in Top Gun Maverick. I'm gonna be using Growling Sidewinder's video, so shout out to him. Thanks so much for letting me do that. Before we get going, if you would, just dominate that like button for me. Maybe even subscribe. Every time you like and subscribe, a Su-57 gets shot down by an F-14, and Maverick does a victory aileron roll. And you know that I love that. <laughs> Stay to the very end of this video, guys, because at the end, I will give you some tips and techniques of what I would personally do in an F-15E going against a Su-57 fell. Let's dive in. Here we are, guys, inside the cockpit of the F-14, and this is going to be a recreation of some of the dogfighting in that epic action scene in Top Gun 2 Maverick. I actually did a reaction to that as well. That should be up on my channel as long as YouTube allowed me to post it. But the visuals inside the F-14 are kind of brutal. Now, we're coming into the merge. You can see here on the HUD camera down there in between the control panel, you can see that Su-57 coming in. Now the merge of the Su-57 is gonna be brutal because you can already just see it basically stopping in the air. The way that I like to think of this thing is it's like you're dogfighting. Oof, see, it's not gonna be good. But you're basically dogfighting an Osprey. You know, an Osprey that can go from flight to hover mode. That's essentially what you're dogfighting. And then it can accelerate to above the mock. So I mean, Wild. So we're starting side by side. This is more like the move that was actually in Top Gun Maverick. Let's see how this goes for him. Okay, so the Super 57 turned with him right when he flinched. Now, that might not be quite realistic because in the movie, he might be thinking that the, that the F-14 is a friendly. So he might just be waiting to see what he does. He might have gotten a shot there. He obviously didn't at this point. Fox 2 coming off the rails. Boom, splash one F-14. <sighs> Mav, not looking good, brother. <laughs> Hey, at least him and Rooster are getting out of the jet in this scenario. Yeah, I mean, the ability of that Su-57 to get behind you, I mean, when you're side by side, is just gonna be, you know, incredible. They're basically gonna do a Cobra maneuver into a falling leaf. Here we are in a rolling scissors. This is a nice representation of that rolling scissors. And ultimately, the Su-57 is gonna stop their forward momentum better than the F-14 and be able to get behind them. Now, the one chance the F-14 has is to basically do a split S here and try to get the nose around, but that's gonna be, Really hard unless the Su-57 loses sight. So this is a great representation of that rolling scissors here. Come on, F-14, I'm pulling for you, bud. Oof, it's just gonna be rough. It's gonna be real rough trying to make that happen with the Su-57's ability to just basically stop in mid-flight like an Osprey. It's gonna be, it's gonna be rough. All right, so Su-57 obviously a winning cues here, Man, but you know, the big thing with the Su-57 is the visuals, bad rearward visibility. So you've got to exploit that. You got to think about what that other pilot is seeing and try to get them to have to look behind them because Russian pilots don't practice defensive BFM, which is crazy. But their mindset is, I won't become defensive. So there's a Fox 2 uh, heater right in there. Ouch. Yeah. Yeah, hey, they got out though. That's good. So that's too tight for the Fox 2 right there. He needs more distance, more separation, and then he's gonna get that separation right then as soon as he does, the Fox 2 comes off the rail. But the Su-57 can basically stop, and when that happens, it's, it's hard to defend against it. So there you go, you can see that Su-57 just getting into the control zone, so set up in a position behind the F-14 where it just basically pushes it around. Man. But good job here trying to get your nose around by the F-14, by Maverick, you know? Nice try, brother. Ah, oh, it was close. That was close to having a gunshot. That's the closest that I've seen yet. So, again, you're gonna have fleeting opportunities. The wings are in their, their farthest forward position, which is good, which is gonna give you the best one circle fight. But man, it's still gonna be tough versus a Su-57 with thrust vectoring. Ah, but never stop fighting. That is the key, never stop. Uh, oof, okay, that one overshot. So it's like an archer, probably uh, Fox 2 coming off the rails and just either got pulled off by flares. Oh, look at that. 
Basically that, that somersault maneuver there that this thing does, it just changes the game with BFM. So even Maverick's gonna be hard up to defend against that somersault there. Another Fox 2 miss, that's good. But he's back here in the control zone again. Guns coming at him, yeah. Dang. Man, just, you know, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be tough to defend against him. I'm sure every time you see that Su-57 just kind of rolling and tucking behind you like that, the pucker, pucker factor goes straight up. That's what we would say, the pucker factor is essentially when you're like, oh boy, this jet is behind me and they're about to shoot me. So, man, it's gonna be rough. Here we go, starting behind the Su-57. Come on, baby. Now, Maverick would have gotten a shot off there. So I think Maverick would have gotten a shot to disable maybe one of the motors on the Su-57, and that would have given him the ability to dogfight this thing. And then if you disable one of the motors, you descend, get low, get as low as you possibly can, try to use terrain masking, which means you're low to the earth, flying map of the earth type, low level flying like Maverick does in Top Gun Maverick. That's your one way to defend against it. But the Su-57 in this video is flinching really soon. So they're getting the first move. So I would like to see this redone if the F-14 had the first move, which would potentially be, you know, one round or two rounds of 20 Mike Mike going through that Su-57 because otherwise whew, it's gonna be tough to defend against, obviously. All right, here we go again. Boop, could be a gunshot right here. Come on, baby. Ah, oh, it's so close. I'm glad you took that shot. I'm glad you took that shot. You got, you got to take that shot. That was, you know, that was so close. So it's getting better. But then again, you get that one shot, and now the Su-57 is behind you, unless they lose sight. If they lose sight, you got a fighting chance. Oof, another Fox 2. Yeah. And hopefully, uh, you know, I'm glad the ejection seat's working for them, as opposed to how it was in the movie, where the ejection seat didn't work. They also call that the last flare. If you're all out of flares, the Wizzo ejects, and that's the last flare. <laughs> Don't want to have that scenario happen. All right, here we go. Man, again, just being able to stop in space, that's kind of the key, guys, when it comes to fifth generation fighters going up against fourth gen fighters, is the ability for these jets to just stop in space and then rotate and turn and point the nose, just like that right there. If you can do that, it's just gonna be hard to defend against. Because again, the key is creating separation. It's a nice flare pattern there on the 257, by the way. It just looks good. The F-22s is really good as well. But here we go. So if we could get one shot in right here, ah, quick round of 20 mic mic. But again, the, the 257 is just getting the first mover advantage, which every time, you know, they're gonna get behind the F-14. But again, unless they lose sight and the F-14 is able to get low, that would be the one way to defend against that. Frustration, brother. Absolutely. You know, it's, you know, any jet that can do, you know, the falling leaf, uh, that can do the Cobra. It's Maverick's Cobra, I'm pretty sure. Or it was like Maverick's grandfather that invented the Cobra maneuver. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, again, kind of getting into like a circle type scenario, or uh, sorry, a scissors type scenario. Oh, man. Got behind him again. Yikes. Uh, Archer missed on that one. That's gonna happen. Did some flares come off at 14 or? Nope, it just, oh yeah. Okay, some flares probably helped there, but it just couldn't square the corner. So that's good maneuvering by the F-14 there. Making it happen, man. Again, I always say, be an athlete. Make it happen. Whew. Nice use of flares. And that's Rooster's job all day. Just looking behind him and then flaring. That's what my Wizzo would do in the F-15E and that was huge because I could focus on the hard deck and dog fighting while the Wizzo was looking behind us, putting out chaff and flares, depending on what kind of missile they thought was coming at him. And a lot of times both. All right, here we go, getting down to the deck. Again, every dogfight is gonna get down to the deck. This might be, you know, if Maverick could have gotten down to the deck into that canyon with some twists and turns in the canyon, that's gonna be you know, the best scenario possible. This flat earth type scenario where the Su-57 is just gonna have a wide open view. Man, it's gonna be hard to defend against that. But that was a good out of plane maneuver there by the F-14. So when you get out of plane, that's like a jink, essentially you're gonna survive. So my big, my you know, top maneuver if I was down at the hard deck 
you know, up in, you know, when you're actually training, your deck would be at like 5,000 feet, but you're simulating this exact thing happening right here. So let's watch here. There you go. Nice out of plane maneuver by the F-14. Yeah, and then I would probably reverse it back the other way and do a jink down. And then that would complicate the gunshot there by the Su-57. But hey man, they're gonna get hit. That 30 millimeter cannon coming off of that Su-57. I only saw one shoot on that one. I don't know if Rooster made it out of that one. <laughs> All right, he rams into him. <laughs> That's probably, honestly, at the end of the day, that might be the one shot. So, you know, it comes down to the flight characteristics of that F-14. So you've probably seen before, there's an F-15, it's an Israeli F-15 that gets its wing ripped off from a mid-air collision. So let's say they were going up against one Su-57 that was right next to them, and Maverick did that right there with their wing. There's been tests done on the F-14 before with one wing fully swept out and one wing fully tucked in, simulating some sort of malfunction in the wing sweep actuators. They're supposed to move obviously to the same exact degree, but if for some reason one moved to a certain direction and one didn't, they tested it to see if the plane could actually come back in and land and if it could fly. And what I've done, what the research I've done and seen, it can actually do that. So again, stable aircraft from what I've seen, would it do what the F-15 did with a wing ripped off and land either with an asymmetric wing or a wing ripped off from having sliced through a felon? Anybody's guess, but I, I'm just gonna throw that out there. That might have been their only shot in the real world to defeat a felon. But Maverick's got a lot of tricks up his sleeve, so they get three, they shoot down three. So thanks so much for being here, guys. If you like this video, let me know. You can hit me up on Instagram and let me know other subjects you would like me to break down. So glad you guys are here. Thanks for helping me grow this channel. Most of all, I hope you have a great day.